If you're currently preparing for your PhD defense or deviva as it's called in the UK and you're dreading the moment and you know you can feel cold sweat already even though you're still not in the room then don't press the panic button just yet because I'm going to give you my top tips for how to not only survive the viva but even thrive and do really really well on the PhD defense. So let's get right down to it. So to give you a little bit of context, when, when I did my own PhD defense or VIVA in the UK at the University of York, I didn't feel particularly stressed and I didn't think that it was particularly difficult or anything like it. And I'm not saying it to boast, I'm just saying it because it is possible to, you know, to really breeze through your viva and pass your PhD really, really well. What is the key to it? Well, it's certainly not having like amazing skills or being super intelligent or things like that. It's simply preparation, right? Um, if you prepare for it really, really well, you're going to do an amazing job. You won't feel stressed and it will seem relatively easy. So how is it done? Well, in this video, I wanna give you my top tips for how you should prepare for the Viva. But before we get into it, um, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers write research papers for top journals in the field. And if you want more videos um, like this one, then definitely hit the like and smash the subscribe button so you don't miss them. So how do you start preparing for um, your PhD defense or VIVA? Well, first of all, you know, you need to be clear on the requirements and exactly what needs to be done because in different countries, this will look differently. Just to give you a quick example, um, in a country like Belgium or Poland, this will involve, uh, you know, a 40 minute presentation in front of an audience. In other countries like the UK, this will just involve a conversation with two examiners. Yet in other countries, you'll have both a public presentation and a conversation with actually, you know, maybe like six or seven examiners. So be clear on, you know, on exactly what is required um, of you. Number two, really important, read your thesis and read it thoroughly again and take notes on it or use post-it notes to, you know, to kind of indicate important parts um, of your thesis. And when you do that, tip number three, try to, you know, kind of step outside of your mind and put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Try to put yourself in the examiner's shoes and try to look at your thesis as objectively as possible and as critically as possible. I understand that this is your little baby that you produced over the last four or more years, but you need to adopt a different, more objective and critical perspective while you're reading it, right? So that's tip number number three. Now, another really important tip is to also try to think about the limitations and be clear on the limitations of your research and how you're going to respond to criticisms of your research. Because typically, you know, the most common questions will be criticizing your methods and the things that you did in your study, the way you interpreted your data, the results and things like that. So you wanna look at all these aspects critically and identify potential problems, potential limitations and be prepared for responding to those, right? And importantly, what you wanna do as well is prepare yourself for the most common questions that you're going to get. Now, typically those questions come in the same order that your thesis is structured. So first of all, you're gonna get questions on the introduction, then on the literature review, then on methodology, and then the results, and then the discussion, and then the conclusion. Alternatively, if you've written a thesis with papers in it, well, then you're going to get questions, you know, on the first paper, and then on the second third paper, and on the third paper, and so on. They kind of come in order, right? And there's a predictable list of questions that people use all the time. Like, just to give you an example, it is very common for examiners to ask a question like, you know, if you could have done X differently, what should you have done differently, right? Or, you know, you mentioned 
X, Y, and Z on this page? Um, why did you think that was important? Th those sort of questions, right? And I actually have a list of questions that most commonly occur on PhD defenses. If you're interested in getting that list, then just comment um, below this video uh, with list of questions or something similar and I'll respond to you personally and send you the link to that list of questions so that you can prepare yourself better. Now, on the topic of actually preparing yourself, how can we do that effectively? Well, I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they kind of prepare themselves for an oral presentation or answering questions orally. They prepare themselves in their own head, right? Or they write down the answer on a piece of paper. But it doesn't work like that, right? Because you're gonna have to talk to these people and answer their questions orally. Therefore, in order to prepare, you have to prepare out loud as well. So, you know, of course you can write answers first on a piece of paper and take notes, right? But then what you want to do is like practice actually answering these questions live, right? So get, you know, speak to your colleague and uh, to your PhD supervisor, uh, maybe your spouse, whoever you feel comfortable with and do different sessions where you practice and that person asks you questions and then you answer, right? If you can't find anybody to practice with just yet, well, record yourself answering those questions. And believe me, if you do this, if you actually practice out loud, then it will be so much easier during the exam. Because if you just practice in your head, that's not actually saying the words. You will still be stressed when you have to say them in the exam. But if you practice and practice actually orally speaking, preferably with another person ans asking you those questions, then it will be so much easier to do this, right? Now, what I would also say is that, you know, when you actually go into the room, there are a couple of things that you can do in order to, you know, reduce your stress level and to answer the questions better. So the first thing is that if you don't understand the question that they asked you, just say so and ask them politely to repeat. Like, you know, just say, sorry, I didn't quite understand your question. Could you please repeat? And then they'll repeat, right? And if you still don't understand it, then you can, uh, then you can rephrase the question to check understanding. So you could just basically say, uh, so just to, just to be 100% sure that I understand your question correctly, you're basically asking X, Y, and Z. Is that right? And, you know, and that's absolutely fine because you have to be clear on the question that they're asking you. Otherwise, you'll be talking gibberish and you'll be failing, right? So don't be afraid to ask for clarification or um, repeating the question. Now, another thing that, that you should do is also to, to have your thesis with you printed. And don't be afraid to refer to your thesis. You are absolutely allowed to do that during the exam. And in fact, a lot of examiners will have a copy and they will ask you specifically. So um, on page 176, um, you said X, Y, and Z, right? And it'll refer to specifically what you said. So have a copy of your thesis and don't be afraid to open it to look for answers there, right? That's absolutely fine as well. Nobody is asking you to kind of memorize your whole thesis, right? You can have it. Another thing that you should have is like, you know, is a piece of paper and a pen where you can write down things, right? So, you know, you can write down maybe like the gist of the question or like the keyword. Because sometimes, you know, some examiners, unfortunately, they, they ramble and they ask you, they, they tell stories and then they ask three questions in one and then they forget what they wanted to ask, right? And I'm not joking here. It's totally true, right? Um, so what you want to do is have a piece of paper and just like write down the key words that they're saying because maybe there are like three things that you need to answer in this one question that they asked, right? And you can use that piece of paper to just very quickly organize your notes. And that was a super tip that my PhD supervisor gave me. And he said like, look, Marek, don't worry about like answering the question immediately, like in the very first second, even before the, supervisor, the, the examiner started speaking. Like, take a breath, you know, wait for five or 10 seconds, organize your thoughts. It's absolutely fine. Even like, you know, write down the two or three keywords that will help you to organize your response and then respond, right? And make sure that your answer is organized, right? So that will 
really, really help you um, as well. So, you know, basically, in order to prepare well for your PhD defense or your Viva, you need to practice. There's no other way around it. There's no magic. And the reason why, for me, my own PhD defense was relatively easy was that I practiced a lot. And if you want to get those that list of most common questions, there's like 100 questions that I prepared for you, then comment below this video with list of questions and I will send you the link. And if you're interested in working together more personally to help you write more research papers regularly for top journals in your field, then definitely schedule a one-to-one -one consultation and either myself or a member of my team will get on um, a Zoom call with you and we'll talk about the exact challenges that you have the goals and will outline a personalized strategy that will help you to get to those goals as fast as possible. And the link to schedule that one-to-one -one consultation is somewhere below this video.